Yo, what's poppin' Poke Pals? Rare Boy here, and I'm back with another impossible Pokemon challenge. Today we're gonna find out if it's possible to beat Pokemon Emerald using only our mascot, Sun Grookey. With Sun Grookey being the new mascot on the channel, he needs to prove himself to us in this unique and fun challenge I have planned. Before we can even begin our challenge, I first need to import Sun Grookey's sprites into our version of Pokemon Emerald. Once the sprites are in the game, I then need to edit the game's internal data, so this once empty data now functions exactly like Sun Grookey would. Let me take a moment to explain Sun Grookey's characteristic since they are all references to Dragon Ball. Starting off, he's a pure fighting type since Goku is a natural fighter. Keeping with the Kid Goku aspect of the show, according to the Dragon Ball wiki, Kid Goku had a power level of 260 when he defeated King Piccolo. With this in mind, I distributed Sun Grookey's stats so that he would have a base stat total of 260, which in Pokemon terms is equivalent to a Skitty. I prioritized Sun Grookey's stats in offense as Goku was all about hitting hard and fast. His special defense is very low, being only 5 as a kid, he was constantly being manipulated by opponents and falling for their tricks because of how naive he was, so psychic type attacks will fittingly be an issue for us in this run. His special attack on the other hand is high because his Kamehameha wave needs to be strong, and I'll explain that in a second. He's also holding a Soothe Bell because when Bulma found Goku, he had his grandpa's 4-star Dragon Ball, and that ball was what made him happy. His ability is oblivious because no matter how many times Chi-Chi made a pass at Goku, he never understood what she was talking about. His moveset is actually pretty standard for a Dragon Ball character, with moves like Jump Kick, Karate Chop, Extreme Speed, and Reversal to make references to the fact that a Saiyan gets stronger as he fights. But then you might be wondering why Sun Grookey knows Thunder Punch and Thunderbolt. Well, according to the Dragon Ball Wiki, the Kamehameha Wave is made of plasma, which is a form of electricity. With this in mind, I wanted the Kamehameha Wave to be a strong but accurate electric type move, and the most equivalent Pokemon move would be Thunderbolt. As for Thunder Punch, it's a reference to my favorite scene in Dragon Ball, where Kid Goku propelled himself into the air using a one-handed Kamehameha wave to punch a hole through King Piccolo's chest cavity. So, Thunder Punch will be our version of the Dragon Fist. That's pretty much it. With Sun Grookey now coded into our game, let's review the rules of today's run. The first rule is that I'm only allowed to use Sun Grookey in battle. We are allowed to capture other Pokemon for HM usage, but they cannot assist Sun Grookey by any other means. The second rule is that I'm not allowed to use items in battle. Held items such as leftovers are okay, but items such as X items or hyper potions are banned until the battle has ended. And finally, no glitches or exploits will be used to complete this game. It's just a normal playthrough of Pokemon Emerald but with Sun Grookey. With the rules explained and Sun Grookey in game, let's jump into some gameplay. The first thing that I do is pick up Sun Grookey from Professor Birch's bag. For this run, I replace Trico, so May takes Torchic, which will eventually learn a flying type move in Peck, making it for a more interesting challenge. It will also be fitting that we both have fighting type starters. I nickname our little mascot Subscribe, which is what you guys should do if you haven't done so already, and also like the content. I take a look at his stats, and he has a rash nature, which means more special attack but less special defense, which is quite possibly our best case scenario. You might have also realized I chose to play as Mei in this run, as my reasoning behind it is that Bulma was the one who discovered Goku, so Mei should be the one to discover Son Grookey in our challenge. With Subscribe now on the team, it's time to find all the Dragon Balls. At level 16, we try our luck at Roxanne, and you might be wondering why I gave Son Grookey access to the move Bullet Seed. Well, Goku in the anime was always eating fruits, such as apples, and some kind of weird pear when he saved those monkeys from the leopard, so it wouldn't be so far-fetched for him to shoot out seeds like a Gatling gun. In fact, if memory serves me correctly, he did a maneuver just like that in one episode. Anyways, with the help of Bullet Seed, we completely obliterate Roxanne's Geodudes. Nosepass, on the other hand, tried to stall us out with Harden and healing items, but we eventually whittle him down with Karate Chops to receive our first Dragon Ball from Roxanne. In order to become a stronger fighter, we need to fight other martial artists, so we took on Broly at level 19. And we got absolutely destroyed, as his Machop quickly shut us down with Bulk Up. Well, that didn't go so well, but a Saiyan always gets stronger after a near-death experience. 
At level 23, we come back and do much more damage to Brawly's lead Machop, who only lands a weak Karate Chop on us. Once he goes down, we manage to Oko Metatite with a crit from our newly learned Dizzy Punch, and last out was Nakuhita, who was a two-shot with Karate Chop, but after his Citrus Berry and Bulk Up not only withstood our following Karate Chop, but brought us down to red health with a Vital Throw. I go for one more Karate Chop, and we get the high crit chance to take Makuhita out. Whew, that was close. With this victory, we gained our second Dragon Ball. Feeling giddy from our latest victory and having learned Bulk Up, I decided to take on our rival, who I would have loved to have named Krillin, right away. I can't set up Bulk Ups against Wingle as it has Super Sonic, so I just obliterate it with Rock Tomb, and then I try to Bulk Up on Combuskin, but we get incinerated by a Crit Ember. Damn, our special defense stat really starting to show in this challenge. After reaching level 30 and learning Sky Uppercut, this became a one-sided fight as we Oko all three of Brendan, aka Krillin's, Pokemon. Okay, Watson time, aka Master Roshi. I start off with the bulk up as I predict we can take a hit from Voltorb, and we do, but not well. Thankfully, with bulk up applied, we can one-shot all of his Pokemon. Except for Manetric, who somehow still outspeeds us and one-shots us with Shockwave. Guess I'll have to keep training until I can outspeed the Electric Wolf. At level 37, we play this fight out exactly the same, only this time we are thankfully fast enough to outspeed Manetric this time around and claim our third Dragon Ball. Also, fittingly enough, the gym leader who looks the most like Master Roshi is teaching us an Electric Wave move. Coincidence? I think not. The leader of the Red Ribbon Army, I mean Team Magma, Maxi, wasn't an issue surprisingly. We managed to set up two bulk ups against Mightyana to negate the Intimidate drop, which allowed us to sweep through his three Pokemon. Yeah, we're nowhere near ready to defeat Flannery. Her Turkhole can one-shot us with a single overheat, and we hardly deal any damage to it, even with a special attack. I'll need to come back at a much higher level. At level 50, Sungruki perfected his Kamehameha Wave and learned Thunderbolt, which we used to obliterate Torkoal. We did land a crit on it, which I don't know if that mattered or not, but I'll take a W where I can. With this victory, we get our fourth Dragon Ball. We rush straight into Bardock, I mean Norman's fight, as his normal types stand no chance against our Sky Uppercuts, and we watch all four of his Pokemon drop one by one. Honestly, I don't know what y'all were expecting from the final Krillin fight, but it was a quick 1-2-3 battle. Moving right along then. Despite the glaring disadvantage against Winona's team, we were holding our own. The problem is we can't one-shot Tropius, even with the bulk up, which means we take a powerful solar beam to the face that I'm actually surprised we lived. It didn't matter though, as Altaria came in and ended our hopes and dreams. Pelipper does have a tendency to spam protect, so maybe I can use that opportunity to get up another bulk up. A quick reset of the game and I put my plan into action and it pays off as we are able to get off three bulk ups this time around, giving us the boost we need to one shot Altaria and obtain our sixth Dragon Ball. Well, my first attempt at Maxi was going well until Crobat outsped us and almost one shot us with a single wing attack. We got him down but then Camerupt ate our sky uppercut and finished us off with Earthquake. Okay then. Our second attempt at level 60 was crazy. We still get outsped by Crobat, but he only went for Confuse Ray this time around. When Camerupt came in, we kept hitting ourselves in Confusion as we raised our stats with Amnesia. I thought to myself I might need a bulk up, so I went for it, and thank goodness I did because Camerupt's Earthquake left us with just 4 HP before we took him out with a Sky Uppercut. This is the battle I've been fearing this entire run, and for good reason. One Psychic from any of these guys will Oko Sun Grookey, and we can't Oko Soul Rock with Sky Uppercut, so I'm gonna have to return at a much higher level. Even at level 74, this fight is still looking like a loss, even if we didn't miss our Sky Uppercut. The problem is I don't have coverage for Clay Doll. Let me look over Sun Grookey's moveset again and see what I can come up with. After a Hidden Power check on a Wild Kecleon, it turns out we have Hidden Power Grass, which is great coverage against Claydol, but at this level, it still isn't enough. Let's try again at a higher level. 
At level 85, I'm strong enough to Oko all four Pokemon, but no matter what level I'm at, I'll always be one shot by Psychic, which means I need a run where they focus only using Sunny Day and Calm Mind. If they attack me even once, it's game over. This is gonna be tricky. Y'all, I've tried this fight about a hundred times under level 100, and every time we lost because of Psychic. These are our stats at maximum level, and that special defense is atrocious. This is our last hope though, so everyone share your energy with me and hopefully we can get a W on this next attempt. Let's get it. Let's go baby! At level 100 we finally get an attempt where Psychic Twins just refuse to attack Sun Grookey. We also thankfully didn't miss any of our Sky Uppercuts. With this victory we gain access to the TM Calm Mine which will be quite helpful for us and we get the 7th Dragon Ball to summon Shenron. But before we can summon Shenron, the Red Ribbon Army, I mean Team Magma, causes havoc in the Space Center. We were doing a great job warding them off with Kamehameha waves, but then things got dicey as Sun Grookey got confused by Swagger and brought himself down to red health by hitting himself in confusion. In the end, Matang pulled through and helped us out. Thank goodness, they were a thorn on my backside in the last episode of the Impossible series. I guess I'll just mention three Kamehameha's were enough to defeat Archie. Nothing to see here. Let's keep it moving. Okay, now that all the Red Ribbon Army nonsense is dealt with, we can finally summon Shenron and make our wish. Mighty Dragon, we wish for a successful run and a successful rest of 2023. In case you're wondering, yes, this scene is the only reason I chose to do this run in Emerald. The final gym battle is against Juan, who was completely obliterated by Kamehameha waves and hidden power grass on Wish Cash. After defeating Juan, he rewards us with our grandpa's 4 star Dragon Ball, which is the only Dragon Ball we'll ever need from here on out. Before the Elite Four is one final fight against Wally, but just like in previous runs, our contender Pokemon just outmuscles his team entirely. In fact, it was a complete and utter sweep against him. First up in the Elite Four is Sydney, but even with the Intimidate drop from Mighty Anna, his Dark type stood no chance against our Stab Brick Breaks. I got tired of Sky Uppercut's inaccuracy, so I replaced it with Brick Break. Phoebe is up next, and on the surface this fight looks scary, but nothing our Kamehameha waves can't handle. I'm just surprised her Ace Dusclops survived our attack and retaliated with a fairly powerful Ice Beam. Glacia's fight was even easier than Sydney's, as at least Sydney's dropped our attack with Intimidate, but Glacia had nothing to protect her ice types from our rampaging Saiyan child. Drake from the 6th is the Elite Four member I've been fearing the most, but thankfully we found not one, but two opportunities to set up Calm Minds as he healed his Altaria and Flygon, allowing Kamehameha Waves to one-shot his Ace Salamence. King Piccolo, aka Wallace, wasn't exactly a walk in the park. His two Pokemon Ludicolo and Milotic could be potential threats as they both have very high special defense stats and Ludicolo is neutral to electric type attacks. With that in mind, I set up two calm mines on Wishcash as it seemed like the weakest link. Even with two buffs to our special defense though, we still took about half damage from Wishcash's Surf. Now imagine if that were Milotic. With our two Calm Minds and HP Grass from Wish Cash, we were clear for the sweep. With this victory, we are registered as the champion of the World Martial Arts Tournament. Normally, my Emerald videos end here, but that's only because we haven't had a contender worthy enough to take on Steven Stone, but Sun Grookey is not one to back down from a fight. This fight seems impossible, but if I can get some Calm Minds, we might be able to win this time. Yeah, no, this fight is a bust, y'all. I don't have an opportunity to set up Calm Minds, and I'm gonna need like at least four to take out Metagross, which unfortunately means Steven Stone wins once again. Well, Sun Grookey wasn't strong enough to defeat Steven Stone, but at least he was able to prove himself by becoming champion of the Hoenn region, my favorite region. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and welcome Sun Grookey to the channel with open arms as I had a ton of fun making this video. On the next episode of the Impossible series, we're going to find out if it's possible to beat Pokemon Ruby using only a Cub Chew. So if you don't want to miss that video, be sure to subscribe and stay tuned. 
Also, be sure to leave a like on this video if you enjoyed it. And in the comment section, I want to know what your favorite part of today's run was. Before I do my usual outro, I just want to clarify some things because I'm sure some of y'all have been wondering where I've been in the last couple of months. Well, um, let's see. I was super busy with work, and then work finally ended about a month ago, but there's something even more important in my life going on, which is I'm in a fresh new relationship. Um, things have been going really well with it, so, you know, we'll see... Uh, what the future holds for us, and I'm really excited about it. So that's where I've been, um, just prioritizing, prioritizing, you can tell this part's unscripted. I've just been prioritizing my, uh, my new love relationship, and uh, things are going great. I couldn't be any happier. So she's been taking up a lot of my time, so blame her for the lack of uploads. Sorry, babe, I had to shout you out like that. Um, but yeah, so it's uh it's a fun new relationship we're getting to know each other we're having a great time together and uh i th i think she's the one y'all so uh <laughs> we'll see where it goes but uploads should be coming out a little more regularly hopefully um but work is going to be starting up again in a couple weeks so we'll see how the uploads go but i just want to let you all know where i've been for the last couple of months but uh, i'm glad y'all stuck around and i'm glad everybody's coming back to watch the impossible series because I still love making them so much, y'all, and I love all the support you guys give me. So, with that said, this has been your boy, Rare Boy, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace!